My Kadenuga has had an inspiring entrepreneurial journey with lessons for every entrepreneur looking to navigate the road to success. The life of the billionaire businessman shows that hard work, a solid network, and a knack for seizing appropriate opportunities are essential ingredients for breaking through and succeeding in life. From a humble beginning with a school teacher father and a petty trader mother, Adenuga has made a name for himself with real estate, oil, banking, and telecommunications businesses. According to Forbes, his current net worth is $7.2 billion. He is Nigeria's third richest man, sixth on Africa's billionaires list, and 44th on the world's billionaires list. However, his close associates argue that Adenuga is in fact the richest man in Africa. Mike Adenuga was born on April 29, 1953 in Ibadan. He attended Ibadan Grammar School and Comprehensive High School Ayetoro for his higher school certificates. Adenuga's parents' intention for him had been to follow in the footsteps of his brother and study at the University of Ibadan, but he had a different dream to study in the United States. His parents had no choice but to support his dream of studying in the US. That decision was possibly the best he made in life and set the tone for his quick success. He went on to study at Northwestern Oklahoma State University, where he graduated with a degree in business administration and Pace University in New York. Schooling was not easy as he had to work as a taxi driver and a security guard to support himself as a student. Now to our favorite part of the story, how he made his first million. Upon his return to the country, Mike Adenuga hit the ground running as an entrepreneur, selling soft drinks while also assisting in managing his mother's sawmill business. Providence smiled on him in 1970. At the age of 26, he had missed his flight on a return trip from New York and had to fly with another airline. The incident turned out to be a blessing in guise. He said, and I quote, I went on a trip to New York and when I was coming back, I missed my flight on British Airways, so I had to fly Swiss Air and I sat next to the owner of one of the biggest lace manufacturing factories in Austria. So we were talking and it got me into the business of importing lace and all sorts of things. This encounter opened the door to making his first million through the sales of lace and other materials and since then he has not looked back. By the age of 32, Mike Adenuga had delved into various businesses such as general merchandise, construction, importation of sawmill equipment, wines and textile materials from Austria. His friendship with the political class has proven to be a good asset in his entrepreneurial journey. When the policy of indigenous participation in the oil prospecting business was advanced during the Ibrahim Babangida administration, a good friend of his, Adenuga was well positioned both in terms of resources and network to be one of the few Nigerians who would be awarded the discretionary license OPL113. This gave birth to Consolidated Oil, also known as Corn Oil. Corn Oil is the first to eat oil in commercial quantity out of many who got the oil license. The company has been producing ever since, thus making it one of Nigeria's most successful indigenous oil and gas projects. Having recorded huge success in the oil sector and other businesses, Mike Adenuga delved into banking. He launched Devcom Merchant Bank in 1989 and Equatorial Trust Bank in February 1990. Equatorial Trust Bank would later in 2006 merge with Devcom Bank while it was also taken over by Sterling Bank in 2011. In the case of the banks, a vital business lesson in life is that you get to win some and lose some. The important thing is to know when to let go, divest, move on or readjust your expectations. Now to the Globalcom story. The story of Globacom is a testament to the can-do spirit of Mike Adenuga, who gets back on when he is knocked down. Following President Olusegun Obasanjo's move to liberalize the telecom sector in 1999, Adenuga entered the race. However, after paying the sum of $20 million for a conditional telecom license, his license was revoked. The loss was supposedly due to Adenuga's Communication Investment Limited's delay in meeting the payment of $265 million by a few hours, a claim Adenuga countered. In 2002, Communication Investment Limited bounced back and secured a bid as the second national operator, SNO. This gave birth to Globacom. This proved to be more of a blessing as the SNO license 
license enabled Globacom to operate as a national carrier, offer digital mobile lines, act as an international gateway for the country, and sell fixed wireless access phones. Today, the brand stands tall as Nigeria's second largest network operator. With over 55 million subscribers, it is also among the biggest players in Benin Republic, Ghana, Côte d'Ivoire, and Senegal. With hard work, persistence, and an eye for opportunities, Mike Adenuga has shown that anything is possible if one sets his eyes upon it and does not flinch. Key takeaways 1. Be sure of what you want out of life and don't let anyone talk you out of it. 2. There is no substitution for hard work. You must give your dream all it takes. 3. Failure is part of success. Don't give up when a door closes on you. There are better doors ahead. 4. Surround yourself with valuable people and choose your friends wisely. Your network is your net worth. 5. Opportunities are not commonplace. Maximize every opportunity and most importantly, you must be prepared beforehand. Thank you for watching this video to the end. We really hope you've learned one or two things to help you. Please feel free to let us know the key lessons you took from this episode in the comment section. Also, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel.